Lisa Lent. Um, as many of you already know, I'm very passionate about the Old Bridge Animal Shelter, and I just have some few words to say. The volunteers group was fortunate enough to get the legal assistance by lawyers in defense of animals, Isabel Strauss, attorney and president. She couldn't make it here tonight, but she did give me a formal statement to make. Having been put on notice by the charges that there is a potential animal cruelty, there is a moral and legal imperative to remove Ms. Chen from her position of oversight, which impacts the health and well-being of impounded animals. Animals which include not only strays, but also owned animals awaiting to be claimed. According to section 2823A, 1.9 item D of the administrative code, each animal sh shall be observed daily by the animal caretaker in charge for clinical signs of communicable diseases or stress. How does the township plan to comply with those policies while well, clearly Ms. Chen has ignored a stressed and dis diseased cat for weeks and almost two months? Jupiter was taken in as a stray in November. Only in late December, when the NJSPCA stepped in and charged Ms. Chen with two counts of animal abuse, did Ms. Chen get help for the cat? Ignoring the administrative code for six weeks is proof alone in her inability to do the job correctly and her lack of care for the animals. In addition, no vet can certify that an appropriate program of health care is in effect while looming criminal charges. Her presence alone will jeopardize the state certification of the facility as an appropriate holding facility. Any violations of the administrative code would put the entire shelter at risk. I understand that these, these are only charges, not a conviction, and that the court case will play out. But in the interim, it is not appropriate for Ms. Chen to continue to make health care decisions for these animals. The public confidence in Ms. Chen has been eroded and destroyed. Our confidence in this council and the mayor is also slowly eroding. Regardless of what you think of us or what we think of you, the fact remains that the municipality runs the risk of incurring ongoing penalties and losing state certification of the facility because of lack of compliance. Now on a side note, I have my own statement. The mayor mentioned earlier that he, have, that he has learned that the only way to prevent drug abuse is to encourage good decisions. I find the statement ironic because I feel like this meeting tonight is your intervention. You have made bad choices continuously by hiring and keeping Ms. Chen on staff. And now we are here encouraging you to finally make a good choice. Cut your losses and move on. We have a petition here tonight that 800 plus people have signed requesting you to remove her from her position immediately. You do not have to fire her but suspend her, remove her from making decisions on behalf of the animals. If she was a pedophile, you would not put her back in the classroom with the children. You would remove her until further investigation. <laughs> Secondly, I worked very hard on presenting that fellow cat TNR ordinance. I, am, I bump heads with the mayor all the time, clearly. I appreciate him actually reading it. All of you should actually read the ordinance. Kearney, New Jersey, their feral cat population has decreased 52% in two years. I would like to know how much has the Old Bridge feral cat population decreased in the past two years with us doing nothing? Thank you. about a million things I can say here. But the one thing I'd like to say is while you're discussing ordinances that are better for all the people in the town, how about one that says that when it's public portion, all the elected officials stick around and hear what we're saying? Okay. What is the point of public portion? What is the reason for public portion? Is a question. This is your time to talk. I'm not going to debate. Okay. Well, the reason for public portion is so you can hear what the public says. 
But I don't think there's loudspeakers out there where everybody's smoking or peeing or whatever they're doing. I think it's great. I know it's a long meeting. I know it's hard to sit through this, but we're sitting through it. So I think you should too. And I think an ordinance should be passed that says if you're an elected official, you should pay attention to the people. I say. Anybody else want to be heard? Just starting back. My name is Tom Deltz. I'm not from Old Bridge, I am from South River, but uh, I have uh, history with the chapter. Uh, so, this is what I want to say. It's been my experience that when you keep an open mind and listen to others, you sometimes come away smarter person because of it. As a dog handler and trainer, I have spoken to many shelter staff, rescue workers, and trainers. In my days, sometimes we have different beliefs and styles, but if you respect each other, it is often interesting, you learn it in two. Uh, I first came to Old Ridge Shelter in 1999 to get a dog. It was a chow mix I wanted, and back then the place was small, not clean. The person in charge was a bit odd to say the least. My first reaction was to walk away but I really wanted that dog. So I put up with the nonsense, and I adopted him out. Uh, I had him for 16 years, very loyal, helped me with all my pack, and I was very glad I got him. Now, I never desired to go back to Old Bridge Animal Shelter because of what I seen way back then. But I had a friend volunteering that asked if I could look at a dog they were worried about, and I agreed. I was very happy to see the improvements that had been made since my last visit. I stayed around for a while to help them with some things, and I was happy to donate my time to them. I wound up meeting a dog that other shelters would have given up on, and he had put, and he would have been put down because he was young, dumb, and a bit mischievous some days. Uh, he spent a while there in Oberg Animal Shelter and eventually found a perfect home. I had many wonderful and head-shaking days with this dog and his antics, but the best was on Oprah today with him. I would spend the entire day together meeting and greeting everyone. He loved attention, and the people loved his personality. <coughs> he was tired. Now, two top questions people ask me all the time because of what my dog experience is. Have, I ever, have my dogs ever gotten into fights, and when do I know when it's time to put a dog to rest? My answer is always the same. Yes, they sometimes get into nonsense, just like human brothers and sisters do, and it's a matter of being aware of the signs they show. And stopping things before they get started. As for putting a dog to rest, it's been my experience that if a dog is no longer eating or able to maintain certain body functions, then it's a good indication. But my best advice has always been for them to talk to their vet. They know the dog, and they can tell if the dog is in pain or distress, and are usually very honest when they see a dog's quality of life diminish to a point where it's no longer fun living like that. It's why as guardians, whether we are shelter owners, caretakers, we have a vet so they can guide us in the proper direction. I remember a dog named Sweetie. It was abandoned in the woods here in Old Ridge. She was emaciated, starving, and couldn't walk. The ACOs and volunteers knew she would never survive in a shelter and would need 24-7 care. The vet took care of her and gave her medical treatment, and I brought her to my home from there. She made a rather remarkable recovery for such a senior dog, and she got together and regained the ability to walk once again. She actually got adopted out to a very nice family. Unfortunately, she did not uh, have long because she was diagnosed with a malignant tumor, but she enjoyed a spectacular life in her last year. I also had the pleasure of meeting another dog in Old Bridge, a dog named Onyx. He was not doing well and had some significant health issues going on. Some volunteers asked if I could come visit him, and I did. He was a rather unique dog in that, as sick as he was, 
He was heart and soul. He was able to move forward. It was a tale of two dogs. When I came to see him and take him out, he was able to hike and play like a regular dog. Those who met him were unaware of the debilitating health problems he had, and they did not know what it took for the ACOs to get him cleaned up, give him meds, which pretty much brought him back to life, so that when I came by, he had the strength and was able to enjoy a little fun with me. It was evident that he was struggling mightily each day, and for most of the time, very sick and very unhappy. The administrator did not want to put him to sleep, even though the vet that saw him recommended it. I, along with others, tried with, I, along with others, tried to reason with her. We have she, to finish up, sir, okay? We have a five minute limit. So okay, she, she had clearly uh, had an adversarial stance, and I was not hearing any of my pleas. I offered to adopt him, and I was turned down because she knew that if I adopted him, the minute I got him home, I was going to take and get him euthanized. Uh, personally, to me, I've always told people, it's better to put a dog down a week early than a week late, because if you don't, it's cruel. Yep. Very yep. simple. Yep. Uh, my last thing is, um, I tell people, not only the answers are found in books and degrees, <laughs> There's a lot to be said for using common sense and listening to other people, mm. and not just your own feelings. And I really think that's not going on in Old Bridge. You know, sometimes their, their <coughs> minds are set. At least this woman's mind is set. And um, I really honestly think they would do better either to train her better or to remove her. But I thank you for finally, doctor, for your knowledge and education that you put so much time into this to much. help the animals and everything. Mayor, I thank you also for guiding the council because I don't think, you know, to his company, Three is a crowd, and it's very difficult. I was a teacher for 27 years in Woodbridge. If we could handle 27 children at one time, I think as adults in the audience and on the dais should be able to be respectful and when someone is speaking, do not interrupt them. We do not allow children to do this. But as adults, we feel that because we're adults, we can do this. I do love animals. I have a dog. I can't have a cat. I'm allergic to them. But in any way that you need help, I would be willing to help you. I am retired, and being new here, I would like to get involved in the township. Mrs. Dungey, I met her by, I needed to find out. No one could tell me how to change my address to vote. And she had sent out a letter, and that's how I found out and started to get involved. And the mayor asked, would I go on to the cultural arts program? And I agree, yes, I will, because I have a degree in music. I make which drive. I'm not really comfortable talking in public. I like to sit behind the scenes. So I did want to address actually some questions that you guys had about TNR. Um, Mr. Rosencrantz, were you the one who brought up the letter, the social media? Yes. That was from Lake Ridge. So what happened in Lake Ridge, I've lived there for 11 years. By the way, I go to Dr. Barry. Dr. Greenberg is not my vet. I do know her, though, from the past. What happened in Lake Ridge is people moved out and dumped their cats. And people who don't understand, and I do want to rewind, so 
sorry, I feel a little shaky. The divisiveness and disrespect on the board and in the audience is really, really upsetting, but we should expect more even though this country has gone downhill. So I think that everyone needs to relax, and I think the reason you're not getting your questions answered is because people aren't hearing them, because there's divisiveness. So my answer to you, um, as somebody who didn't know anything about cats until they adopted their first two who had feline leukemia 20 years ago, ended up doing TNR. I've been with Alley Cat Allies in DC. I've been with a local TNR person in Old Bridge who no longer lives here. She brought her cats in when the colony got small and the people who she was on their property feeding didn't want her there anymore. So that's one of the answers of what happens to a colony. She brought them inside. At that point, she was over the limit for this township, so she didn't want anyone to know. Things don't always work out when we have ordinances that prevent one thing and ordinances that prevent the other thing. So we have to keep that in mind. If we're not going to let one thing happen, we have to let the other thing happen. So in Lake Ridge, people dump their cats. And what happens is it started out as an orange male, and then there was a female tortie. And guess how many kittens they've had over the years? So what happens is, I'm sorry, this isn't working, no, but I can no, talk to right one of the mics down there, you want to sit down. Maybe you hit the button. Is, this, is the green light still on or no? Uh, now I've turned it off. I can yell. I'm afraid it's No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't yell. I can do my mom voice. But the people at home want to hear you. So what happened was, people started feeding the cat, so they started to feed them. It is not a colony. They are not TNR advocates. They are neighbors who think, oh my God, this poor little cat is starving. I see them in the neighborhood. I decided not to get involved because everyone knows what happens when you get involved. So I watch them. And I've been to the shelter and I've adopted cats from the shelter. But the cats in Lake Ridge have gotten out of control because the kittens have mated with the dad and had more kittens. There have been roadkill on the road. It's a hazard. The woman is complaining, it is not TNR. If it had been TNR, that first cat would have been taken in and neutered and adopted out because it was not feral. It was a dumped cat. And the problem that people don't realize, and everyone behind me knows, feral and domestic dumped are not the same thing. And what also happens, I think there was another question about schools. Most colonies happen around dumpsters. They don't always happen in neighborhoods. They almost never happen in neighborhoods, except for dumb cats. So TNR actually makes the difference. They, they look at the difference between what is actually a feral cat who cannot, you know, is not around people, and what's domestic and can be adopted out from the shelter. So that's the first thing that would change. That situation in Lake Ridge would never have happened because somebody would have called animal control. Animal control would have then taken the cat. Instead, they then, oh, it's so cute, it's so cute, and now we've got, we've got a cat problem in Lake Ridge. The other question about the colonies, um, about the dumpsters, I'm sorry, I'm watching the light run down, um, would take care of itself as well. And there was another question that you asked that didn't get answered, and I was sitting there raising my hand hoping to answer it, and I, do you remember it? Which one was that? Yeah, it was something when we were talking about the TNR. The original neighborhood? Uh, taking it back. So, as any, right, and again, I started knowing nothing about cats. I didn't know what the call was. So, I tend to approach education as education and not yelling. And what happens is there's no such thing as a sanctuary. Everybody wants a sanctuary. I've driven cats out to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania because we've dealt with feline leukemia and FIV cats that no one wants. So, sanctuaries are actually not a realistic thing. Nobody wants them in their backyards. Nobody, you can't have a hundred cats together. It's not going to work. That, that wasn't my, that wasn't what I was thinking. I was thinking something large, away from the homes, away from the residential areas. Right. You know, it's something that every rescuer dreams about, like cats for one but it doesn't one exist. Town. Yeah. It's like looking for a barn for feral cats because they're great mousers and people don't mind. But it's one of those things that really never happens because it's one of those pie in the eye, if world was perfect. So I think it's one of those things you should realize is never going to happen. So that next time when you come together to talk about the ordinance, you can come at it from a uh, more education, knowing that this is probably never going to be ever. It's never going to be a solution anywhere in the, in the U.S., in the nation, or in the world. 
it happens in rural areas, you can get John Stewart Sanctuary, perhaps. Yeah, we have to move on now. Right, I'm sorry. That's okay, rural areas here. There's a lot of other people want to talk, so. Do we have rural areas here? We do. A second Township Council meeting? I didn't think I would have to come back, let alone speak again, and be a voice for the animal. But seeing as though the past few meetings comments fell on some deaf ears, I had to come tonight. When I am out, or even at home, I think at least once a day about the animals at our shelter and their welfare. Seeing our once incredible Old Bridge Animal Shelter fly across the television on News 12, stating the charges Miss Chen received, I was sick to my stomach. If only people listened when we spoke the first few times, these events could have been avoided. I have three questions. How, just how, is this woman able to keep her job? Why have I still not seen her here? Who does this woman know that she is able to continue doing this? It is unacceptable, and if it is continuously ignored, I might have to ignore some of your re-election campaigns. You guys are all elected by the people of the town who believe that you will represent us, all of us. Just sitting by and watching all this happen is not why we chose you. Do something. I'll, I'll stand if that's okay with everyone. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Matty Giuliano. I am the chaplain for the Monmouth County SPCA. Um, I came here this evening because uh, your township has been making some uh, interesting moves when it, came to, uh, when it comes to animal welfare uh, with regard to your shelter director, uh, the continued debate that's been going on over TNR. Uh, and I thought that I should come here in my position in order to speak with the elected officials of this town. Uh, for 10 years, I was an animal cruelty officer for the state of New Jersey in Monmouth County. Uh, I did about 2,000 animal cruelty cases before I retired and received my ordination, and now I'm the agency chaplain. And I wanted to remind you all, with regard to your TNR ordinance, that we have a real responsibility here. We have a responsibility not to just have dominion over these creatures, but that dominion is supposed to be good stewardship. You have to be good stewards. You have to pass this TNR ordinance. St. Francis of Assisi said, not to hurt our humble brethren is our first duty to them. But to stop there is not enough. We have a higher mission to be of service to them whenever they require it. And I think you need to embrace that and you need to realize <coughs> that these animals are creatures of God and are reliant upon us to provide them with the level of care that others have failed to do. If we don't do that, we are not living up to our God-given responsibility. <coughs> I know Tom had spoken earlier about a particular dog. He had spoken about Onyx. I was called to give that animal his last rights. And yes, I read an animal his last rights because the animal is entitled to it. The animal deserves it. The same type of kindness, dignity, and respect that each and every one of you would deserve at your final moments here on this earth. So I hope that you will take these comments this evening, you will embrace them, you will cherish them, and you will be able to reflect on what it is that you have been elected to do, not just for the residents, but for all the creatures that reside within Old Bridge. So please, I hope you take this to heart tonight, and may the Lord continue to give every one of you peace. Thank you. My name is Veronica oh, Aronspeck. I'm the general manager at the Associated Humane Society in Tenton Falls. I've been with that shelter for the past two years. Prior to that, I was with Monk County for 16 years. And uh, through the years, there uh, was some problems here and there with Old Bridge. Since I've been with the Associated Humane Society, I've sent my animal control officer to the town to help uh, Karen and his uh, animal control 
with uh, different situations that have come up, and I do honestly think that it is a lack of education. Um, and I just want to say that our organization is behind <coughs> the town and the animals if need be. And so I have the card, and I'll leave it for you. And we're there to help because we do care. Thank you.